the last thing that we want to discuss in this uh, first part of uh, our discussion on, on uh, functional programming in ML is uh, what is called cases and patterns. So, uh, as we have discussed earlier, list functions usually have two cases. They have a base case for the empty list and a recursive step for, for the non-empty list. So we saw in, in ML that uh, we saw earlier that, uh, for example, the length of the empty list is zero. And then the recursive step is that we can, if, if the list is not empty, then we can use the const pattern to break it up to the hat and the tail. And the length of such a list is then one plus the length of the tail. And uh, we saw earlier, if we go back, the, the, then we saw we wrote it in this manner here, length of x, we check if, uh, if null of x, then zero, else one plus length of the tail, by using the tail function and we're using the null function. Now, ML actually allows us to write uh, this uh, function and in general uh, implement uh, functions in uses uh, u using a different manner uh, using cases and patterns. So we can say something like this fun length of empty is equal to zero. So this is one case that when the argument that comes in is empty then we return zero. Then we say or uh, length of this pattern a double colon y meaning that then that the list that comes in has a head and has a tail uh, if it's if that's the case then we return one plus the length of y and notice here what we're using is that we're using two cases either we have the uh, list uh, where the pr formal parameter is empty or it's of the type uh, of the form a double colon y, meaning it has, has a head and a, uh, and a tail. <coughs> and um, so we have two cases and, and we're using pattern matching. This is the empty pattern, empty list pattern. This is a pattern for head and tail. So this is why it's called cases and patterns. And notice here that there is no need for calling explicitly the null function, a uh, function for the hat, or function for the tail, if we implement it using cases and patterns. So recall from our append function that we did earlier, we said fun append x comma set, if null x then set, else header of x double colon append tail of x, sorry append tail of x comma set. If we use cases and patterns instead, we can rewrite this and say fun append empty list comma set. If the first formal parameter is empty, then we just re return set. This is the first case. This is the base case. Or if that's not true, if the formal parameter cannot be matched with the empty list, then we can split it up to a head and a tail. And if that's the case, then the result is a double colon append y comma set, where y is the tail. Again, notice how this cases and patterns mirrors exactly the previous uh, implementation. The difference is that we, we're not calling the functions for manipulating lists uh, explicitly. Like null of x, we're not calling it because we're using pattern matching for uh, the empty list. We're not calling uh, the header function because we're using pattern, the pattern a double colon y. So a is the hat. And we're not calling tail because y here in the recursive call to append is uh, our tail. So you can actually write or implement functions in ML using either way. You can use cases and patterns, or you can use if uh, uh, if statements, or uh, if else statements, and uh, null function calls and header and tail and so on. 
it's uh, it's really up to you what you want to do. Uh, I suggest that you use whatever you feel more comfortable with, uh, what you what uh, whatever you feel more readable. In in to to express my personal view, I like the cases and patterns uh, approach because I simply think it's more readable than the other one. So if you compare the two uh, approaches here, the question is: you should ask yourself ask yourself which one do I find more readable? Now, <coughs> talking about the patterns, uh, if we have uh, functions that take more than one argument, we can declare them like this, fun, then the name of the function, then the pattern, equal sign, and then the body. And the pattern is then an expression consisting of variables, constants, pairs, and constructors. So uh, an example pattern would be the empty list, as we saw earlier in our example here. We had an empty list here. This is a pattern. Um, the const pattern, a double colon y, which we used here, basically spitting a list up to a head and a tail. And then this is a pair, x comma y, in parentheses. So it's a pair. And we have seen examples of this. For example, in um, here, we have we open paren and close paren, and inside we have two uh, two uh, formal uh, uh, parameters, and and we look at this as a pair. This is a pair of arguments. Same here, append, open paren, x comma set, closing paren, then x comma set is a pair. Um, So, for example, we could write a function first this way, fun uh, first of x comma y is equal to x. So, this function uh, accepts a pair as an argument consisting of x and y and returns the first part of the pair. Um, Notice what the interpreter tells us. What is the type of this, this function? Well, star means uh, uh, a composition. So we're composing a, a pair here, a, a star b. So this basically denotes a two-tuple. Two-tuple meaning a tuple that consists of two elements. The first element is of type A, and the second element is of type B. Notice that ML doesn't know what the type is, because we, we haven't specified the type. We haven't told ML, ML what the type of the first argument is, or what the type of the second argument is. So it's a, it's a uh, function that takes any type, uh, uh, any pair, that is, uh, it takes a pair whose first um, element is of type a and the second element is of type B, and we result uh, the result that it returns uh, a type of uh, the first element. Notice it's the A that is returned. So I can do first of one two. That gives me one. That gives me the first element. In this case, it gives me an integer. What if I do first uh, John Mary? It gives me John, and now in this case gives me a string. So in a way, this function first is polymorphic because it because it can accept um, pairs of uh, of any type. I could also have written it this way: fun first of x comma underscore, and this is called the don't care pattern because uh, the second variable isn't really used. No matter what I re uh, uh, send in as a second pr parameter, it's not used in the body of the function. So I can just, uh, instead of giving it a name, I can use uh, what is called a don't care pattern here. So in general, we would write functions like this, that if we're using patterns. We have fun, we have f, we have pattern number one is equal to expression. 
or we use the pipe operator f pattern 2 is equal to expression 2 and so on up to pattern n is equal to expression n so in our length implementation we have fun length that's the name of the function we have a pattern uh, which is in this case uh, the empty pattern and if that's the case if the if the list is empty we return zero else and this is the only other case the list is of the tie is of the form a double colon y where a is the hat and y is the tail and we return one plus length of y so in this implementation here we have two patterns and two expressions two cases two patterns um, in some cases we will we have to be careful when not all cases are covered when we're using patterns so if I uh, declare the function hat fun uh, hat of um, a w y sorry a double colon y and I want to return a from it it says warning maths no exhaustive um, the problem is that what if the list that I'm sending into hat here is empty if it is empty I cannot break the list up into um, a hat and a tail if the list is empty I cannot apply this pattern here so this is why the ML gives me a warning uh, if I do head of 7 that's fine because uh, what does the implementation say if I uh, uh, the list 7 can be broken up into the head 7 and the tail empty and it will give me the head back which is 7 but if I do head of the empty list I get uh, match failure this empty list cannot be matched against this pattern a double colon y and there is no other pattern that I have uh, introduced so that's this is why I get a non-exhaustive maths failure okay so uh, let's end this with uh, one example here uh, that uses patterns uh, this is uh, a function called strip and uh, strip takes two arguments um, an element and a list and the purpose is to strip from the list all the elements that start with the given element so strip one comma the list one one two three one one gives me back the list two three one one because I have stripped away or deleted all the instances of the element one at the beginning of the list notice I'm not deleting the, the elements uh, at the end of the list or in the middle of the list only uh, the elements at the beginning of the list that match the uh, element that I sent in as a first argument so I can implement this with a pattern I can say um, well if I if my pair that is coming in notice it's a pair it's a pair of an element and the list if the pair that comes in contain is of this pattern a comma empty list so I'm trying to strip some element a from an empty list well that just gives me back the empty list there's nothing to strip from so that's the base case if that's not true then my list that comes in which is the second part of the pair um, has the form b double colon y a is still my element and 
and B is then the header of the list and Y is the tail of the list. Well, what do I do? If A is equal to B, if A is equal to B, like in our case here, 1 is equal to 1, then what I want to do is basically remove the header from the list. And I can remove the header of the list simply by calling strip again, now with A and Y. What is Y? Y is the tail. So I'm basically disregarding B here. I'm uh, in reality, I'm just removing B by calling strip again with the original element A and now the tail, which is Y. So in that case, it would be uh, when we sent in the list 112311, we remove the header and what is left is the list 12311. Uh, we call it the function again and A is again equal to B and then we call strip with 1 and the list 2311. In that case A is not equal to B because A is 1 and B is 2. What do we do then? Then we simply return the second element. We return uh, B double colon Y. So we started uh, our original call was uh, element 1 and the list 112311 so if we do this here, we call strip with one and the list one, one, two, three, one, one. What happens? A is, A is, this is our A and this is our B. A is equal to B, and then we call strip with A and the tail, which is 1, 2, 3, 1, 1. So the next call will be this, 1, 2, 3, 1, 1. Now, our second element is not empty, so the first case is not applicable. The second one uh, a is uh, still 1 and B is still 1, so A is equal to B and then call, again we call strip uh, with A and Y which is the tail. So I call again strip but with the tail of the second, with the tail of the list which is 2, 3, 1, 1. Uh, A is not empty, sorry the list is not empty. Um, this is my A, 1 is A or A is 1 and B is 2, so A is not equal to B, so I'm re supposing, supposed to return B double colon Y. What is B double colon Y? Well, it's the list 2, 3, 1, 1. So the result of this is 2, 3, 1, 1. And that's what uh, we were supposed to do. We were supposed to uh, strip the element 1 from the beginning of the list. Now, just to end this, uh, here I have this function. I've already programmed it into a, in a file called strip.sml. So I can, as we uh, talked about at the beginning of a discussion on, on uh, SML, I can uh, load this program by using the use keyword. I can say use and then the full path. This is the full path to the, that uh, uh, file in my system. And when I hit enter, it tells me that strip is a function uh, which takes a pair. Notice we have the this uh, composition or product, it's called also a product uh, uh, operator. So it's a pair, it's a two tuple where the first tuple, the first uh, part of the pair is some type and the second part of the pair is a list of that type and it returns the list of that type. So notice
in our example we have some type in our case uh, here it's integer and then we have a list of that same type we have some type a and a list of that type and we and this is a pair it's a pair that is coming in and we return a list of that type because this is what we return back so if I just copy this and paste it here I get exactly what we showed earlier when we uh, traced it uh, we, I get an integer list back now I should be able to call strip with some other parameter I can say it's the character x then I, I want to strip but now I have to be sure that I have characters in my string in my list now it's a string list that I get back again this shows uh, that the you can easily build polymorphic functions in ML even though it is a typed language it uh, offers uh, polymorphic functionality that you don't have to specify the um, the types of the arguments uh, the type inference f uh, functionality of the of the pro of the program languages uh, can deduce the types and then uh, the functions or the argument the functions themselves can be polymorphic in the sense that one can send into the functions um, arguments of different types as we have seen here we we called strip with an integer and then an integer list or a uh, string and a string list and the same function worked for both.